Well, these sunny days and warm temperatures are just ideal for Bermuda grass to grow, and it's doing fine in lawns and gardens around Oklahoma. But I tell you what, fescue just gives people fits this time of year. We wanted to take a few minutes to give you an update on how to grow fescue and, and cover some tips that will help you be more successful with it. And of course, first of all, we want to focus on the mower itself. Fescue this time of year is not enjoying the heat of summer. It's a cool season grass. It grows very rapidly in spring and fall. In the summer, it goes into a semi-dormant condition. So to help it through, there are two things you can do with your mower. One is to raise the cutting height about another inch so you leave the blades a little longer and don't stress it quite so much. That also helps the blades to shade the soil and keep the root system cooler. Second of all, make sure that you keep your blade sharp. A sharp blade will make a cleaner cut and leave fewer avenues for disease to get started in the lawn. And disease is probably the number one call that we're getting in regards to lawns at extension offices across the state right now. People who have fescue lawns are suffering from brown patch. And brown patch gets started when we water at the wrong time of the, of the day. And a lot of people, when they get home from work, like to wait to the cool of the day to water. They feel it's going to do the most good. Actually, the best time of day to water your lawn is between 5 and 8 a.m. in the morning. Then the watering is done efficiently, but the foliage has time to dry during the day and it doesn't go into nighttime in wet conditions. Those conditions are perfect for brown patch to get started. Now if you have a newly seeded fescue lawn and you're new at growing it, you must also pay attention to how frequently you water. Many times disease gets started because people have put in an irrigation system and they run it every day or every other day. Well, that just leads to more shallow root systems that are that much less drought tolerant. It's better to leave it on for a sustained period once a week and give the lawn a good deep soaking than to run it real f very frequently and end up with disease problems. Now, if your fescue lawn is looking a little bit pale, we don't recommend fertilizing right now. Again, spring and fall, when it's actively growing, are the times that you want to put on that one pound of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet. If it is looking pale, instead, you could spray on foliar iron. Now, there are two kinds right here. Both of them are simply this one is mixed up with a, a sprayer with water and sprayed on. This one comes with an attachment that fits on the top and then you attach your hose to it and it's like a built-in hose end sprayer. And before we went on air, one of our ambassadors pointed out that liquid iron can really build up inside a sprayer and, and clog it over time. So you might want to dedicate a separate hose end sprayer for that use if you're buying the type that doesn't come with an additional nozzle. But the thing about iron when it's sprayed on foliar is that it, it turns on the chloroplasts in the plant's cell structure and it can very quickly green up a lawn without stimulating rapid growth. And rapid growth is what fescue does not need right now because it is suffering through the heat and has a semi-dormant condition. Well, good luck with your fescue lawn this season. Again, hope these tips are helpful. And remember, if you're going to overseed it, wait until at least September when it starts to cool off. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.